So listen, apparently the audio for the second edition of YouTube Secrets leaked out early. And so I figured why not run with it? And I found out that you can actually get it for free if you have already downloaded YouTube Secrets. And so if you didn't know, um, we are dropping the second edition of YouTube Secrets. You can see this updated second edition. Um, it has a whole two new chapters, a whole rewritten chapter new case studies, all kinds of stuff happening. And we're gonna be rolling it out, but it's already out. And so um, it didn't quite all get synchronized. I think the Kindle's not updated, the physical book's not quite ready, but I figured, hey, why not turn this into a party and just let you know that if you um, already have YouTube secrets, um, you can get this uh, for free by just updating your Audible app. And I'll explain all the details in this video, but it's good to see you if you're here live. What's up, Adam? Uh, hit the like button uh, and uh, let's dive straight into this. And I'll kind of tell you the details. Plus, I'd love to answer your questions. If you have a question, drop three question marks before and after your question. Yeah, Starm here in StreamYard. I'm in an unsanctioned Saturday afternoon stream. Um, I'm just solo, uh, a solo edition out here today. And so um, good to see you. And uh, my name's Sean Cannell, rhymes with YouTube channel. I'm the author of YouTube Secrets, along with my friend Benji. And the second edition is coming out. And um, I'm excited for that. And so let me give you all the details. Um, first, um, the brand new edition of YouTube Secrets has, uh, it's quite, it's significantly larger. The original audiobook I think, was about three and a half hours. This one's five and a half hours. And I'm excited. It's not fluff. We really thought, how do we update this to a level that is just insane. You know, the first book was written in 2018 and we thought, man, a lot's happened. We had a hunch that YouTube was going to be big, um, but it's far exceeded even our wildest imagination. This next decade is going to be the best decade on YouTube. And so we really broke down the book, rewrote it. But here's the cool thing. I mean, if you have, if you if you'll need to get a second edition physical copy, it would be a whole nother book. But the audiobook you can get for free. And so all you got to do is um, go to your Audible app on your phone. And uh, if you have the Audible app, let me know if you already have YouTube Secrets. And um, go into your library. And then what you can do is you go into your library and remove from device. So if you remove it from device, assuming you've downloaded it right, and then you re-download it from the cloud, what will end up happening is you'll get the second edition for free. It'll just update and you'll get the new preface, uh, the new introduction, as well as the new chapters, including a chapter on the perfect video recipe, including um, a chapter on um, the new YouTube features, including YouTube shorts. Now, if you don't have it, you, of course, you can also get it for free if you don't have Audible. So if you go to tubesecretsaudio.com, you can use, you get one free credit just by signing up to Audible and you can get it for free that way as well. And then I suppose if you do have Audible and you don't have the book, then you also could go the direction of just downloading it with one of your credits. Um, and so uh, let me, uh, got some good questions coming in. Scott says, is there any difference in your basic strategy in the book? That's a great question. The original seven C's of YouTube success remain the same, Scott. And that's kind of cool. When we created this book, we wanted it to be timeless. And, it, and we learned that the framework we created was timeless. So here's the seven C's of YouTube success. Number one, courage. Number two, clarity. Number three, channel. Number four, content. Number five, community. Number six, cash. Number seven, consistency. I'm impressed that I was able to do that off the top of my head. Um, and so the seven C's of YouTube success, it starts with courage. You got to punch fear in the face. It then goes deeper in clarity in terms of you got to get clear on your niche. We've updated that chapter with some new details to give you some more clarity. So actually, really the introduction of the book, and this is the first edition, not the introduction, the book's broken into two parts. Part one is the seven C's. That is mainly unchanged because we've learned we created an unbreakable framework that will actually transcend time. You always gotta be courageous. Even if you feel comfortable now, there's a new level of courage. You always gotta pursue higher levels of clarity. You always gotta refine your channel strategy. You always gotta 
double down on the quality of your content. You always want to engage your community and give back to your community. You always got to figure out new ways to make cash. There's so many opportunities to make cash now too in this new era on the creator economy. I mean, whether it's new affiliate programs, whether it's YouTube adding features. Um, I mean, I don't think Super Chat and things like that were out back when we first created this uh, book or channel memberships for that matter because we wrote this book in 2018. So there's there's new, there's things like Ko-Fi, right? You know, things like Patreon, buy me a coffee, new ways to monetize. Um, and then consistency, but really part two is where it gets interesting. And my favorite chapter in the book is called the perfect video recipe and the second edition of the book. And so, um, there's, that's there. We also rewrote the social media chapter with a whole different perspective. Um, that is pretty timely. And it actually kind of is along the premise of social media has a lot of negatives to it, meaning it can really actually be a distraction from your goals, from YouTube success, if you spread yourself too thin too soon. So we really have another level of strategy on the social media part. And then there's a whole new chapter called new YouTube features. And we go through shorts, community tab, YouTube stories. We double down on live, which isn't technically new, but there's it's it's been completely revamped really. And so anyways, um, definitely, you know, check it out, Scott, uh, we'll let you know when the physical books, uh, are in second edition. I don't think that's why this is kind of a leak is the audiobook. Uh, it didn't really come out synchronized. And so, Hey, it's cool that the audio is out. If you want to grab it, this is kind of cool. This is the Korean translation of YouTube secrets. I think the book's been translated into, um, eight, uh, different languages now. And so uh, if you just downloaded it, thank you so much. Oh, by the way, too, I figured why not um, do something cool? And if you have read uh, YouTube Secrets or you grab the second edition, and actually I would love it if you grab the second edition and you do a review, I want to hook you up with something cool. Um, and so um, I want to, this is kind of an, a, a, an unreleased it's actually kind of been a sunsetted course, but it's super valuable. It's called Crush Collabs and um, $97 YouTube course. I'd love to send this to you for free if you just do a review. So if you email support at seancannell.com with the subject line book review, and then just post a link or a screenshot to your review, meaning your review has to be legit on Amazon and um I think if you, you know, go to the reviews, uh, like you come in here and a screenshot could be like, you use a screenshot tool, like, uh, you know, grab the screenshot of, of your name, you know, and then just email that to me. I'd love to hook you up with this. Maybe you've left a review in the past. Uh, just would appreciate it. It really helps authors. Uh, when you do book reviews. So if you want me to send you this course, crush collabs is all about collaborations. How do you reach out to people to collab? How do you collab with people if you don't have to meet in person? What are the best ways to do it digitally? How do you um, reach out to get people to be interviewed on your show? And what are even some of our scripts and emails? Hook you up with that for free. You can't even buy this course, but if if you would want me to send this to you, uh, do a review. By the way, sometimes when you do a review, it takes a day or two for it to even show up on Amazon. So if you uh, get your review done, and and by the way, if you... You can do any kind of review, or maybe you did one in the past, but if you specifically do a review of the second edition, that's what I'd be looking for the most. Like, I'm so pumped, especially here's my, here's my ask of you. If you, if I've ever added value to your life, one, if you already have the audiobook, two, re-download it, right? As I've described for free. And then if you haven't left a review three, leave a review and be like, this is so cool. I got the second edition for free and oh my gosh, it's, it's great. Now, by the way, I'm not telling you what you should say in the review, even if you were like, the book sucks. That's great too. I'll still send you the course, uh, <laughs> crush collabs. So of course leave an honest review. Um, but, uh, if you do find out that it's as good as I think it is, then I'd love to hook you up with this, um, as, as well. So, um, if you have any questions, post question marks before and after your question. Um, and, uh, I'll star a couple of those. And uh, let me know where you're watching from. I'm out here in Las Vegas. It's 1.14 p.m. About to uh, head out with my wife and uh, kids. Uh, kids? K kid? I have a son named Sean Bradley. I have a um, second son coming in September 3rd. So that's that's cool. 
and uh, I'm starring some of your questions right here. Smash like if you're fired up for a new day. And um, we will be answering some of your questions here in just a second. Let me see where you're shouting out from, though. Shout me out. Texas in the house. We got Norfolk, VA. We got uh, Pennsylvania in the house. We got St. Augustine. Uh, we got it's 9 p.m. in the UK. The Gaming Mom. Always good to see you. Phoenix, Arizona in the house. Nashville in the house. Lindsay, good to see you. Uh, saw you on Instagram Live as well. I did see you over there. Appreciate you. Nashville is a vibe, man. I love Nashville. My friend John Mediana is out there with like this NFT Nashville. Like that's a whole scene now, it seems like. Uh, I hear people going out to that. My friend Roy Vaden lives out in Nashville. My friend John Acuff lives out in Nashville. Um, BRA fam in the house. Good to see you. Okay, so let's answer some questions. Hong Kong, 4.15 a.m. Man, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you being here. And um, thank you. Uh, thanks for being here. Okay, so if you got a question, four question marks before and after. I see you, San Diego. Let's answer some of your questions. Can you get a V2 uh, as a physical book? Yeah, so the second edition of the book should be out shortly. Um, if you actually go to Amazon, you may see this new cover, which has this yellow strip. That's how you know. Um, but there's kind of a process involved in getting the listing updated. So just know that it's coming. Of course, uh, we will definitely make a, a very targeted announcement when that is clear. What I can say for a fact is that the audio has leaked ahead of the physical book. So um, tubesecretsaudio.com will uh, allow you to get that um, off of Audible if you want to check that out. How much does keyword order matter? I use vidIQ and I can move keywords around uh, when they tell me it's the top keyword. Adam, pretty minimally. Um, uh, let me break down though some keyword order or some optimization order. Here, here's what matters in optimization, Adam. Uh, number one, the title by a landslide. Like the title carries the most weight when it comes to keywords. So let's check out this new video from Omar, new Adobe Premiere features. So for example, Adobe Premiere Pro is a keyword and that matters a great deal uh, in the title, of course. Uh, and new, you know, Adobe, the new Adobe Premiere, export settings, captions, and more. This is all searchable because if there's new features to Adobe Premiere. And then the front loaded uh, sentence of the description now carries the most weight. Now, this is not gonna make or break your video. Your video itself is gonna make or break the video. The content, uh, audience retention, but the title carries the weight. Then the beginning of the description, and then as far as the tags go, it would be, the first tag or the second tag, but tags carry a lot, late, lot less weight than they used to. And this video, even in like, a, if we were to judge it in ranking, this is more of like a utility based video. It's just kind of we shot it at NAB, some new announcements. Of course, if you want to win for something, you want to put out a really good effort of um, Adobe, Adobe Premiere Pro really understanding like uh, for beginners, like a strong video like this, right? And then really, this is a good one from Vince Opera right here. Pre a Premiere Pro tutorial for beginners 2022. You're getting the 2022 in there. You're getting the word tutorial in there. You're getting the word beginners there. Like that's what matters. Good thumbnail, click through rate. And then I would imagine he follows up with a good video. Here's one of our ranked videos, right? Omar's videos ranked number two here, two years old, 1 million views. Adobe Premiere tutorial, follow it up with a good video, great thumbnail, stands out on the page. So um, keyword order is not a huge deal. I do love vidIQ where it obviously allows you to like quickly go plus, 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 like get your title right and add the keywords in because I want to do the best practices, but my strategy around keywords is about a three minute task using vidIQ. Like just you know, figuring out the big idea and then just adding, using the little plus button and then moving on. Spend most of your attention, Adam, on title, content, thumbnail. All right, uh, any thoughts on shorts on your regular channel as opposed to a separate channel? And what easy video editor do you recommend for 
PC. So Adam, number one, I would say if your shorts, whether it's a short video, a medium length video, a medium to long video, a long live stream video, ask yourself this question, Adam, why did the viewer subscribe and what value do they hope to get from the channel? If the short is going to deliver that value, then in a way, there's no reason it should be on a separate channel. But if the short is off brand, the word I like is promise. If the short is off promise, so we're posting seven videos a week now on our Think Media channel. Five full length videos, two shorts. More or less Monday through Friday, full length videos, Saturday and Sunday, two shorts. It's also an experiment, which by the way, everything should be an experiment, right? You should always be testing, analyzing the data, and then making adjustments and course correcting as you go. But the key is we are asking ourselves this question because I'm making a lot of vertical video. And just because a vertical video, for example, can work over on my Instagram, let's say, um, just because a, a vertical video works over here, any of these theoretically could be uploaded to Think Media as a short, right? These are, these are like, this could be actually uploaded as a short. This is actually like a blatant promo that Patrick Bet David is speaking at in, in Vegas. So while I could do it, I'm not going to upload this on Think Media, right? And then there's also some things like maybe like, mm, mm, like this one, like this gets a little personal developmenty, which is fine because I kind of I go there. I like to go there. My my Instagram account is called Sean Cannell. It's my account. Now, of course, I want to mainly talk about YouTube but I get a little bit more personal development. So here's here's my point that I'm thinking is we are asking ourselves, is this on brand or on promise for Think Media? Is it close enough? And here's how I define that. Is it talking about content creation? Is it talking about YouTube? Is it directly about cameras? Is it directly about how to do video creation? If it gets, if it's too far outside of that scope, won't post it there. So that's it. I think that you should experiment with shorts on your regular channel. So long as about to sneeze. One, two, where's the mute button? Perfect. Um, so long as it's on brand for the channel and it honors the reason people subscribed, uh, that they subscribe for. If it doesn't, then absolutely post it maybe on another channel or consider not doing it at all because it's hard enough to grow one channel and try to build everything up. Try to focus all your energy and your effort and build everything up. Uh, easy video editor for PC. I think Filmora is easy. Some people, DaVinci has a free level. Some people think DaVinci is easy. I don't know if it'd be easy. Um, and yeah, that's, I, I think Filmora might be it. In fact, I'd like to ask anybody watching. We got 99 people on. Uh, let me know if anybody has a recommendation for an easy video editor for PC. Um, I like Adobe Premiere personally, but that is not easy, quote unquote. If you didn't hear, uh, YouTube Secrets Audio Edition leaked out a little bit earlier than we intended on Audible. So if you want to check out the updated second edition of our book, YouTube Secrets on Audible, go to tubesecretsaudio.com and um, let me know if you have any questions about that. Uh, yep, Filmora, I've heard. Premiere Ed Elements is a, is a great one to check out. Uh, that's a lighter premiere. And I, I think you can get it a lot of times for like 80 bucks. You can get Adobe Photoshop elements and Adobe premiere elements as a combo for a good deal oftentimes. And it's not even reoccurring, meaning you pay once Adobe premiere elements 2022. Hmm. So here's the bundle Photoshop elements, premiere elements, 80 bucks. Amazon.com. Uh, there it is. There it is. $80. You get both. And uh, this is the student and teacher edition, which technically you need to be a student or teacher. Um, and stop. Proof of eligibility. Oh, yeah. So you, you need to actually prove that in order to get this version. Otherwise, you know, grab a different version. But yeah, Adobe Premiere Elements, Photoshop Elements. I agree Adobe Rush is worth looking at and Adobe Rush is also uh, a mobile solution 
quick turnarounds, quick edits. Uh, Youth Man's used DaVinci. Um, you know, if you haven't heard, Billy uh, Ribka um, is actually, he's on the Think Media team now. He is our executive producer uh, for uh, kind of helping us with content and whatnot. And you could check out his channel. Uh, he is the DaVinci expert all things DaVinci, how to install DaVinci, DaVinci 18, modern titles in DaVinci, ultimate glitch effects in DaVinci, video editing DaVinci. So Billy's the man. And uh, you could check out his channel if you are a DaVinci uh, addict. And he's a part of the Think Media Collective, the Think Media team now. Uh, hey, thanks for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Hey, uh, you're welcome. Thanks so much for the love. And uh let me know how the update goes because I'm assuming you already have the audiobook and therefore you can just up delete, remove from device, and then update, re-download it, and you'll get the second edition. It leaked out early. So if you want to, you know, grab the new edition, worth your time too. We really put uh this is a fresh take on dominating YouTube for a whole new decade updated second edition uh thanks for the love and um if you got a question po post four question marks before and after your question and uh i will star some of those power director old classic sony vegas great i used to use sony vegas back in the day shot cut marcus good to see you in the house appreciate you um Yes, no need for the annual subscription or even the monthly subscription. When you use Elements, you can just pay once and just keep using it. Good to go on there. All right, we got a question coming in. Should I remove videos from my channel that are not on brand but have done well? Yes, and here's why. Let's dig into the Think Media analytics to see what we can learn to illustrate an answer to your question. In fact, we have some videos that admittedly, here's the question. Are the videos <clears throat> bringing you the wrong subscribers? Okay. So what you want to do is you want to go into your real-time analytics because you're saying the videos, if they've done well, but they stop getting views, it might not be a big deal. But here's the big key. If they've done well, uh, but they are, still getting views, but they're attracting potentially the wrong subscribers. And, and here's ones that are kind of a ironic uh, are, are sort of ironic for think media. And, and I'll just to illustrate. So two of our best videos, this one right here is an ad for our event growth video live in Las Vegas, which is a few days away, by the way, if you haven't um, heard, are you coming to grow a video live? It's going to be insane. We're about 75%. We're almost sold out. Um, but this video right here, not only came out in 2021, but it gets 20,000 views every two days. Now, downloading sound effects royalty free, right? And meme effects for video editing, it's not completely off brand for our channel. However, if you want funny sound effects for your video, and here's here's the even better thing to, to look at, is you want to dive into the data and you ask yourself, okay, is this attracting the right audience? And, you know, one, where's the audience coming from? US, fine. It is interesting. The audience is a little bit younger, 18 to 24. Funny sound effects, predominantly male, all good. And, and by the way, I am completely comfortable leaving this video up. But I would say, and it's, 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 it is attracting a ton of subscribers. I don't know about a ton. Let's actually look. But I mean, tens of thousands so far. And then you just got to ask yourself, are they the right subscribers? And my conclusion is it's all good. Well, maybe not a ton. So 7,000, 6, 6.9. Um, but those individuals, here's, here's, let's think about it deeper. Why do they subscribe? They wanted free sound effects. We don't do that very often. We did the meme one later. And, uh, and so then we did that one. But of course it would be, this would be a, a better example. This would, it'd be much better if they subscribe for, how to title a YouTube video. That'd be like exactly what we want or the new Adobe Premiere settings because we teach video editing. So that's the answer to your question. If those videos are still attracting subscribers, 
but those subscribers would not be interested in what your channel is doing right now. You should make those videos private or unlisted. You should shut them down because they're ultimately not going to help you achieve what you ultimately want to achieve. And an example would be if maybe I experimented a little bit with gardening and I made a video on how to do a raised planter and grow healthy tomatoes. And if that video was still getting views and subscribers and attracting a bunch of people that were like, wow, this guy's gardening information is amazing. But I went the direction I'm going now with Think Media. And here's one way, one thing you can look at as well. You could go in the last 28 days. So 712 new subscribers came from this video. So if you have a video that is bringing you new subscribers, but you're no longer making that content, you're actually going to confuse the algorithm. And, and you're not going to get closer to your ultimate goal, even though it's, it's going to hurt a little bit because we love vanity metrics. Oh, but my numbers are going higher. Oh, but I'm closer to a thousand subs. Oh, but I'm closer to a hundred thousand. Okay. And yeah, you can maybe get a silver play button or a gold play button, but what's it really matter if it's just a mixed bag of really the wrong focused audience? You have to think deeply. Not all metrics are good metrics. Not all views are good views. Not all subscribers are good subscribers. So I would I would think clearly about what the vision of your channel is, the goal of your channel is, who your channel's for, why people should subscribe, and uh, and double down on that. Okay. If you got a question, put four or five question marks before or after your question. Um. And I'll answer, I got a bunch of good questions coming in here. Smash like if you're grateful to be alive today. And quick update, I'm doing just stream as a reaction to discovering that YouTube Secrets second edition is now out on Audible, a little bit ahead of when we attended, but people are finding out they can get it for free. If you've already downloaded the audiobook, you can just update it inside of your Audible app and you can grab the second edition for free. Worth your time. A lot of new content, about two hours of new content on the Audible edition. Physical coming soon enough. And if you want to really leave a review of any YouTube secrets, I mean, you've read it before, whatever, the by, by reviewing the second edition or whatever, because it'll ultimately be the same listing, it's only better. It's this stronger. It's this a lot stronger, right? This is the first edition. Here's the Korean edition. Um, and if you want our course crush collabs for free, um, all about how to do collaborations, reach out for collaborations, get a channel that's bigger to you to collaborate with you, get guests that are out of your league on your interview show. You want some emails that we wrote, just email support at seancannell.com. After you've left a review and that review is clearly public on Amazon, either audible or the main site, just put in the subject line book review. And then um, put a screenshot or a link to your review just so we could verify it on the Think Media team. Um, that'll be starting. Uh, uh, we'll be getting back to you, by the way. I'm streaming on the weekend uh, by business days next week. So just be a little patient, but we will totally honor this. A $97 value. This is like, a, I think, a couple hour course that we recorded a little while ago with Omar. We've done a lot of collabs. As you know, I've interviewed... Uh, hundreds now of different YouTube influencers and along with Benji who's the co-author of the book. Um, we've had, we've gotten in touch with all kinds of crazy people. Casey Neistat has been on the show. Gary Vaynerchuk's been on the show um, as well as have continued to be like Grant Cardone, Lewis House. And so um, if you're interested in just getting that for free, um, it's actually pretty chill. You know, we'll just send that to you if you just leave a review of the book and email uh, a screenshot or a link to your uh, your review at support at seancano.com with the subject line book review, and we'll hook you up with this online course for free. Why not? And we're super pumped for the second edition of this book. Believe that it's updated uh, for a new decade. It's four years later since the first edition came out. Number one best-selling YouTube strategy book in the world, over 80,000 copies sold, which is pretty gnarly, but the future is forward. YouTube is alive and well. It's not declining. It's actually increasing uh, more monthly active users, more watch time, 
Um, is competition increasing? Yes, but so is consumption. So if you got your strategies right, you got your focus right, there's also, is competition increasing? Sure, but there's also just more interest in like, for example, things that never existed before. Like the metaverse wasn't a thing, now it is. NFTs weren't a thing, now they are. Crypto wasn't a thing, now it is. Uh, Peloton wasn't a thing, now it is. So there's always new opportunities and YouTube is the town square of video on the internet by a landslide. Now it's time to double down on your strategy. Now it's time to go all in. And uh, this book's here to help you. And, you know, if you don't have an Audible account, there's two different ways you can get this free. So tubesecretsaudio.com and, and free is a good deal, in my opinion. Um, you might disagree. Uh, so can we get the free book if we have the printed book? No, unfor unfortunately, if you have the printed book, then no. But if do you have an Audible account? Because if you don't have an Audible account, just go to tubesecretsaudio.com and, and you actually can use, they'll give you one free credit. So yes, if you already have used that credit, then, then you'll have to use an Audible credit for it. Worth it though. Did you know you also can return your Audible credits? I mean, I don't know if they like you do it a lot, but you actually can be like, I don't like this. And they'll let you exchange it and stuff. It's pretty cool. So um, don't just take my word for it. Actually check out the book, find out that it's great and let's keep it moving. All right. Hey, talking about books, when's Heather's book, YouTube Made Simple coming out? YouTube Made Simple is coming out first quarter 2023. Excited about it. Um, all right. Did you remove YouTube Empire from your courses? I can't access it despite its purchase. Um, no, uh, you absolutely should be able to access it if it was inside of your members area, but it's no longer there. We'd be happy to fix that. Just email us at, uh, you know what, you know what a really good URL to go to is you can do a support ticket at thinkmediasupport.com. I'd recommend going and we'd be happy to help you. Uh, there you go. Please fill out this form. Great. So I don't know where that question came from, but I'm posting Think Media support in, I'm on StreamYard. So it's only going to go to like the YouTube stream where this is and the Facebook stream. Think, or just go to thinkmediasupport.com. Yep, we'll hook, we'll, we'll get you sorted. Craig, I appreciate you, Craig. Thanks for being here. Releasing two videos on the same day. How much time should you place between them? I, I like, okay, so I like to place time between them as much as possible. So a lot of times if we do a live stream on Think Media, we, may, we might also release a video on Think Media. So here's what our schedule would be. Schedule upload 5 a.m. our local time. You can always check inside of your analytics to see the best time to upload. That's what we do. So new Think Media video comes out 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, if there's a live stream, that'll also be scheduled in StreamYard where we are hanging out right now. And maybe that's scheduled for 10 a.m. So about five hours later. But it might be scheduled for nine. So I wouldn't actually overthink it too much. I would just generally try and separate them. Um, and if you're going to release two videos, the other way we'll do that is shorts. We might release a short and a video in the same day. And yeah, I try to separate them by a couple of hours. Don't worry about it too much, but I would try to give it four, five, six hours if possible or morning and night. A video drops at 5 a.m. and you go live at night at four to five or six or something. Um, if possible, I delay by one day. Like all things being equal, if you have seven, like for example, on Think Media, we have seven units each week, five regular videos, two shorts. Um, that's our chosen content calendar and upload schedule. And so we are doing it one a day as opposed to two on some days and some days none, if that makes sense. So, I mean, assuming you have that many up units to upload, and what we love, Craig, is the schedule upload feature on YouTube. So a lot of times videos are scheduled. Well, I mean, the weekend videos are scheduled before the weekends. In fact, our new strategy we're testing and we'll be happy to report back is we're uploading shorts on Saturday and Sunday. And uh, we scheduled like eight months, eight, nine, 
eight shorts, which is two months. So we scheduled like two months ahead, Saturday and Sunday, two a week times four is eight. Okay, that's only one month. So a month ahead. So we, we scheduled eight shorts, two Saturday and Sunday for an entire month all at once. Like obviously you had to like download them and title them and got them all optimized. And so there you go. So like, like on autopilot, those are just come out. In fact, I'm, I forgot we're even doing it. I'll look, I'm like, oh yeah, we uploaded a new video today. And then I'll go in the comments and engage and do all that stuff as well. So uh, those are a few tips for you. Hey, smash like, if you're just joining, uh, let me know where you're joining from in the world. My name is Sean Cannell, rhymes with YouTube channel. Uh, I am announcing here, we're streaming a couple places. If you're part of the VRA fam, drop a hashtag VRA fam. Uh, I just wanted to get the news to you because it hit my radar that um, even though it wasn't quite I planned it, that uh, the updated second edition of YouTube Secrets is out and you can get it for free. So I want to thank you so much for the support of the book. If you've already listened to it, downloaded it on Audible, all you got to do is remove it from your library re-download it and boom, the new one will be in your, in your library. Good refresher, but also, um, about two hours of new content. And the whole thing has been re-recorded, redone because we rewrote it, updated case studies, uh, very strong project to get your mind, right. Your strategies, right. The seven C's of YouTube success have not changed. Um, but there's a new chapter on how to use social media to grow your channel, a new chapter on the perfect video recipe. It is an enlightened approach to how the YouTube algorithm really works. And, and there was a lot of outdated things that are deleted. Like we took out uh, the approach to ranking is different now. You know, as the Creator Video Ranking Academy, that course first came out at, uh, in 2016, at the beginning of 2016. That's six years ago. Like things have changed. And YouTube Secrets came out in 2018. It's 2020. Now, of course, CTR, ABD, um, of course, uh, the engagement signals being on video signals much more than, you know, any kind of tags or anything really extra optimizing your video. And so the book has those types of insights as well as, uh, it'll just be great. And I think encouraging to you, um, as well. And so Christianity explained is in the house. I created the same content for blog podcast and YouTube right now. I'm liking both on blog should the youtube video be separate from the blog same content you know what's kind of cool about that question is um i think you can get away i think people underestimate how much of the same content they can use i think that you, one of the reasons why you might be getting burned out or exhausted is because you're constantly trying to say new things I also think that if you're constantly trying to say new things, the things you're saying can't be that strong. Because what's kind of true about truth and really solid wisdom or answers or advice is that the tried and true is usually what works. So if you're constantly trying to come up with new things, it'll probably be a pressure that will push you to share untested theories or share things that are half-baked or puts you into an unsustainable pace. So what I would recommend is that you say the same things in new ways to new people. That's the formula. You want to be saying, you want to figure out kind of what your core message is. So I'm assuming you're, you're doing like Bible study, right? Or you're teaching things around faith and Christianity. Great, right? Again, it's not like if someone was to come up to you and they're like, I have a new doctrine, the apostle Paul would warn, okay, that's where, you know, we're not looking for some, like something new here. We're looking for the same gospel, right? Now, of course, though, there should be modern illustrations, which would be saying the same thing in a new way, saying the same thing more creatively. So if someone follows me for a while, and you probably recognize this, you're part of our community, like sometimes people will be like, mm, Sean says the same thing. It'd be like, yeah, because I'm going to share what works. <laughs> like, you know, I want to share. Michael Jordan says, master the fundamentals and everything else you do will rise. So why are we trying to master the non-fundamentals when the fundamentals are the foundation of ultimate success? Okay, that was a long road around the mountain to get to the point to say, when you say the same thing 
in new ways. A lot of times that you saying the same thing in a blog though, which might be writing out your thoughts, saying the same thing long form in a podcast, watch, saying the same thing by turning them into TikToks and short form videos. So for example, like as I'm doing these types of videos right here, if you've seen any of these, I'm actually using, like I actually taught this in a blog, in a podcast. I, I had a podcast that was all about complaining, making excuses, overthinking and comparing. And that podcast was like 35 minutes of me going off on these four things that you should stop doing. So all I did was I dug up my podcast notes and then refined it down and shared the same content in the podcast in less than 60 seconds and turned it into an Instagram reel. And eventually this will be a YouTube short. So the punchline being is, I mean, it was hard work to sit down and like plan out an outline for my video podcast. So then I can just go look at the long form version and be like, all right, let me share that as less than 60 seconds. F turn the camera so sideways, did it as a, as a vertical video. So my encouragement to you today, and I hope this is actually really helpful for you on a Saturday or whenever you're watching this replay, is um, don't be afraid to, to look at your past videos. If you use Google Docs or whatever note-taking software, if you have any content outlined, if you even, if you have, um, if you ever wrote a book or an ebook or you're sitting on, you have a journal and you've got a lot of stuff that like you feel like you've shared before, you, you're sitting on gold. If you've been a content creator for 12, 24, 36 months, you should be resharing, remixing and repurposing so much of your stuff as opposed to trying to go find new stuff. And here's what makes it new. What makes it new is though having a fresh take on it. What makes it new is contextualizing it to a new year. It's 2022. What makes it new is YouTube Secret Second Edition is new, but it's also the same. So it's still the seven C's of YouTube success, but it's all new stats. It's all new case studies. There are a few new changes and we have the chapter but we also, this is actually kind of a great example. If we're it's kind of a meta case study, obviously, as I'm letting you know that this book is out. But I also see a lot of people, they want to go write a new book. Like in the author space. Why don't you put out, why don't you keep promoting the same book? I heard Dean Graziosi say that once. I think um, one of his books hit 100,000 copies and his team came to him and they said, Dean, your book just hit 100,000 copies congratulations. And they go, so what's the next book going to be now that, you know, we should celebrate. And then like, what's your next book? And he goes, next book. Why don't we keep promoting this book? Sold a hundred thousand copies. Why don't we do 200,000? Like, and, and, and I think too often because you're always trying to say new things. No, no, no. Say the same things in new ways to new people or say the same things in the same way. Watch to new people. Because if one person in your comments is like, mm, you're saying the same thing, I get 30,000 subscribers on Think Media every month. So if you've heard it before, great, skip the video. I'm talking to new people. And you got to figure out how to do that too. So constantly be thinking, that's why as you grow your business and brand, how do I expand this thing out by maybe hiring somebody or using repurposehouse.com to, to expand out into other mediums vertical video, TikTok, LinkedIn articles, other places. And how do I also create strategic content that helps me reach a new audience? Because eventually too, if your current audience is not resonating, your current, like you need new people. You just do. Like if your current audience in a way hasn't taken action, like they probably won't. So you, everybody needs to be reaching new people. Like any business owner needs to be reaching new customers. Yes, going deeper with customers you have, finding ways to keep serving the customers that you have, but you got to be reaching new people, right? It's, I mean, it's expand, grow, be fruitful and multiply. All right. Beat that one to uh, a pulp. Um, okay. How we doing? Uh, hit the like button. Thanks for being here. And uh, let's star a few questions to get them queued up. 
And thank you for hanging out with me on a Saturday. And uh, let's see. Oh, this is a good question. How likely is it that the Kindle version will update? It That's the same thing will happen. I'm cross my fingers. I believe the gaming mom that when the Kindle version of YouTube secrets is updated, you will get it for free as well. So let's, if, if you go to the Amazon listing right now, what you can see is, uh, you can see that a paperback says it's this updated second edition, but what, I, oh, let me see here too. Ooh, maybe you can actually order the physical because if you go inside, it, it gives you a preview of what's inside. Oh my gosh, here's the new chapters. Okay, so you got the perfect video recipe, brand new chapter. The social media, the good, the bad, and the ugly, completely rewritten chapter. Discoverability is uh, completely rewritten because of the way ranking works being different. Um, collaborations, similar. Uh, tent poles, team, think different, new YouTube features. And then the appendix is completely rebuilt with um, all kinds of new resources. It's a lot's kind of happened. So excited about it, plus a new preface and whatever else. So apparent, well, wait a minute. Let's check old Kindle. See? Mm -hmm. So old Kindle is the old one. And this is where we're at. This is why I'm on here. Uh, like it leaked. It's, uh, we don't know. There's the old, in fact, the old book, it apparently is 197 pages. Let me verify that. Yeah, this is 192, this physical copy of the first edition. So I'm about to order this because I don't even have a second edition right now. So this one is 272 pages. I'm about to Amazon Prime myself my book because I don't have a copy. Uh, let's see, Monday, May 9th. Great, here for it. So it looks like you can get the physical. I'll make sure that's linked up in the description if you happen to be watching the replay and that's kind of neat. And it looks like the Kindle is not updated. So whatever. But I, the same should be true that once the Kindle is updated, um, you could just remove it from your device, re-download it, and you'll get the second edition for free. Unfortunately, obviously the physical edition, you'll have to rebuy the second edition because it's a physical book and obviously there's no way I could, if I could like Dr. Strange and like, literally you came you're like, Oh my gosh, like the book literally teleported and transmuted itself into the second edition. That'd be pretty cool, but I can't do that. But these digital versions, you're literally getting hooked up with the updates for free. If you already got either the audiobook or the Kindle. So that's kind of cool. And, uh, that's that's good news. I'm about to order the physical second edition. We discovered that together. This is the height of luxury. Anybody know that movie? Anybody know that quote? We'll see if anybody could call that one out. Um, all right. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. So In Season Ministries with Randy just resubscribed to Audible and downloaded the second edition. Oh, cool. Great. I appreciate it. Thanks for grabbing the book. Um, all right. Lightning round. Is there such a thing with me? I don't know if there is, but I'm going to go for it. Uh, lightning round. Okay. I'm beginning to expand my brand and I'm hosting my first ever event for home theater, two channel music enthusiasts in July. Any advice for hosting your first event? Come on, youth man. Lightning round. Um, I can't go lightning round on that, but I'll, I'll give you some advice. I love the question. Um, it's harder than you think to do in-person events. It's like very different. Most people underestimate how hard it's going to get to be some, uh, to get someone to come out, even if it's free, uh, especially in today's world. It's just like, people don't have to travel. There's virtual events, there's pandemics. There's like, people are worried about traveling. So, so don't underestimate the amount of effort and marketing energy that you should put into it. Don't underestimate the fact that people will buy tickets and not come or they will register and not show up. So the level of energy, you just kind of want to 10 X the amount of energy you think it's going to take and the amount of touch points and follow up you'll want to do to enroll the people who've even said they're going to come to actually come if possible. Like if it was, you know, call everyone and be like, I'm so excited that you're coming 
and um, heads up, here's some details that you need to know. And you're like, well, that's a lot of work. Yeah, events are are, are a lot of work. And, it, and it's powerful though to potentially, you know, if you could have someone help that just follows up or texts, texts or call, calls everyone that's potentially uh, coming. Um, as far as when it also comes to your first event, you've probably been to events, but I don't know how much long. Okay, it's in July. Uh, attend a couple events or meetups and you've probably been doing this, but look with a whole new set of eyes about things that, uh, about distinctions that you would want to change for your event. So here's 56 things that I start to notice. And then I think about when applying to events, walk, I walk into event. Why is there a trash can? I was just at an event called the ultra conference in Vegas. Why is there trash cans <laughs> and like sewage standing where we're being forced to be in line. Like, could we have moved those? Cause I'm an event person myself. Okay. Get inside. Why is the tablecloth all sketchy? And there's a weird box of t-shirts and it looks like this place is trashed. Okay, great. Why is there a completely inefficient point of registration here that we just skip by? That doesn't really make sense. Why do they not pre-communicate with me about registration and how that was supposed to happen? This is a huge bottleneck. This is like the theory of constraints. Just what are all the bottlenecks? Okay, get into the event. Troubleshoot your audio ahead of time. Now you're an audio, you have no, you have zero grace for this. Your audio needs to be perfect. You are an audio person. And that's, you know how hard audio can be. Please have your lighting be right. Please have the stage clean. Please have no feedback. Please have the mics work. I have, we went to an event in LA, big YouTube event. And it's funny too, because it's literally a content creator conference, but I've never seen such bad audio and video. And it's actually kind of historic. And what they would do is they would hand the mic, the person, it, it would cut in and out probably because it was Wi-Fi microphones and uh, not like a better frequency, I guess. That's what I'm thinking because there's too many uh, uh, gigahertz, you know, conflicting. And so uh, it would be like, eh, it cut and what they would do is then they would come up and the audio person would just hand them a different one. And then that one would suck. And then the audio person, they would just keep like switching mics and it was never solving the problem. So don't cheap out in audio, video, lighting. Um, and I remember one time I was at an event that Casey Neistat was speaking and he had videos to play at a YouTube conference. Like he was gonna play his videos, like bike lanes. And like uh, some of his original viral videos. And he had his laptop. And I remember like four AVL guys gathered around his podium as Casey Neistat is keynoting at your event. And they were all like, they're like plugging in dongles and things. <laughs> and, and they never were able to get the videos to play at a YouTube conference. So you would think that like, Audio, video, and lighting is easy, but it's not apparently. And so things like these are kind of my pet peeves as just thinking about parking lot to platform, uh, thinking about the experience. You know, I think about the music playing in the, uh, so many events, like opening night networking party. I go to Dallas, I'm at an event. These are all these people too. These are content creators. Now, maybe they're not event promoters and creators, but dude, you got to know that music creates energy. It sets the mood. It sets the tone. It sets the atmosphere. And like, nice place, little cash bar. <laughs> and I'm up here like, we couldn't put a little ambiance? Like, could, couldn't have a, a, a little music playing? Like, energy, atmosphere, What's the vibe? How does it feel? Odor. Like sometimes, you know, you do an event at uh, a um, gym, like put, get some potpourri, you know, like actually think about making the, making the place smell good. Like that's all the five senses that people are going to experience from parking lot to platform. We take our events seriously, man. I, I'm excited for y'all to come out to Grow a Video Live too because it should be an experience. And, and then there's even things last, I think partly this has helped from being a part of 
not just church because because just because you're part of church doesn't mean you you know some of these things but being a part of churches that are thoughtful about like greeters like people welcoming people i call them generators and it's just thinking about what we learned in in church is also too from parking lot to platform you might walk in and like you don't know where to go signage okay and then you get in and not only that like if your volunteers your volunteers are like you you walk up you're like is this is this youth man's event and they're like yeah they open the door can i can i go through here i guess like you don't want that volunteer like you don't want that person you you want to be thinking about the fact that like it, we're grateful you're here hospitality you know good energy the right people on the front lines and those types of things can make or break an event of course you want the content to be good you want, I mean, all the way down to don't let people do widescreen <laughs> slides squished into four, three or vice versa. I mean, ooh, I'm about to have a mental breakdown because I see this stuff. I see people who call themselves professionals. Like they know it got resolution, right? Their audio sucks. There's feedback. I mean, I remember friends, I have been to events. I've been to a lot of events. I have been to high level events. There was an event that Brendan Burchard was speaking at. It's pretty, pretty big dude. And I was like, do you think this is funny? Hit like this, this is on the internet. Uh, <laughs> and the entire time, there's like a thousand people at this event. I'm speaking at this event. It's in Southern California. Brendan Burchard is speaking. They've spared no expense except for on the AVL team. He's out of focus. The camera is back focused. So if you could imagine, right, he is blurry and the, and the camera's autofocus is tracking to the back wall the entire session. Actually, when it would cut to the side angle, he'd be nice and crispy. So I'm watching this and I'm like, are you kidding? I'm like, the recording's ruined. First of all, we're in a huge room and there's iMag. He's bl he's literally blurry. Who's the cameraman? Who's the cameraman's boss? Who's the event promoter? I actually know all these people, so I'm sharing no names or events uh, are, will be disclosed. And I even addressed it like I because I know the person and I was like, hey, uh, you know, I don't know what happened. I heads up for future sessions. Um, you know, you might not want like these all star speakers to be blurry when it comes to your videos uh, of them, it would be better for the guests and for the recording. That's where I, cause I think about the recordings. I want the audio and video to be crispy for the reuse. You're throwing an event. So that'd be the other thing youth man is think about like as much as it's a lot to think about. So delegate and get as much help as possible. Like think about how you can use all the content you're getting from your event for your YouTube channel, but only if it's, actually in focus hopefully and if like you know and too often i see people who claim to be professionals uh will will like after the event you'll be like so hey how'd the session go and they go oh um the, the audio is like not on i'm like what do you mean the audio wasn't on like you have one job dude like what are you talking you were like it actually should be unacceptable it's amazing how much people get away like I don't know else like because you're also all you can do is be incredibly sad. Like the meme music plays. It's like, hello, darkness, my own friend. Like, why am I still here just to suffer? Like, because once the audio is gone, it's gone. Or once it's staticky the entire time. And I was like, was nobody manning? There is an event where the virtual experience streaming. The gain going to the virtual feed was so low. And I heard somebody telling me, they're like, I was listening to the virtual feed. Oh, they were driving in for in-person and they had the virtual ticket. They go, I had to turn my Hyundai speakers. I had to turn it up to a hundred. All the hiss noise, you know, because like the audio floor was so loud. I had to turn it up to a hundred and I could barely hear the speakers speaking. But then once the guy fixed it, I got blown out of my car because the gain levels were set wrong. Youth man, this is not a lightning round, but I have a few tips for your event. Please 
take care of the details. Make sure the recordings are great. And uh, and when I went back, when by the way, when I talked to that person about Brennan Burchard being out of focus, you know what he said to me? He goes, no, he wasn't. And I was like, what? What do you mean? Like, have you ever talked to somebody that's delusional? You're, you're like, it, it, it's either in focus or out of focus. Like you can, it, it was out of focus. Like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think it was. What? What? It, it was, I mean, I, I, it's fine. Like maybe we could fix it for the future I and mean, there's forgiveness, but not if we can't admit. And so anyways, <laughs> that's all I have for you. Well, that was quite the journey of emotions as we talk through some different events. Um, I can tell that this is Sean's pet peeve. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and it's funny too, because now I guess I'm like the CEO of our company, but this is my roots, like freelance videography, you know, event production. Our church had a TV show. Our, I ran, managed my church's YouTube channel. And so cha training the video guys. And one of my biggest things too, though, is a lack of humility. And uh, if you make a mistake, admit it. Um, if it, if anything's less than world-class, admit you're trying to grow. Uh, but, but, but there's a weird level of pride amongst audio and video professionals because sometimes I just go, I'm like, listen, it just doesn't sound good. Like, can we make the feedback stop? And they kind of look at you. This was the last story. <laughs> so I'll be at these events. These are all true stories. And I'll look back at like the AVL team and there's, you know, there's a list of, there's a whole thing of uh, tables, there's tables. Cause there's probably like what? There's a lighting board. It's the sound board. Maybe there's a soundboard for the online, you know, there's maybe that pro presenter where they're control controlling what's on the screen. You know, if you've, if you've seen some of these, it could, it could be pretty robust. And so I'm at an event in LA and, and at these tables, right? There's like 10 people back there. Okay. So then you're sitting there listening to the speakers and, and you're like, why there, there's all there's static. The mics are cutting in and out. The speakers are also kind of blown out, like the gains jacked. Honestly, the AVL was even wrong for the room. Like, like they didn't have the right tools for the room. People pay good money too. Like this is like this, like almost a thousand dollar tickets. So it's kind of crazy. But then I'll look back and I'll be like, what are these 10 people doing? Like just sitting there, like, well, I mean, how can you endure the shame of, of just sitting there? Anyways, and so if anything, and then I'll, I'll I'll be like, hey, you know, we can maybe there's there's some audio video lighting problems, and someone will go, uh, yeah, I mean it's it's fine, I okay, I mean it's not fine, but uh, okay, we'll we'll keep it going. Sound man, pay attention. Uh, union, it could be it, it, that that actually that's actually a solid point in, in here in Vegas. That's sometimes true. Like you have to actually because of union labor, you have to it like literally have someone stand by the plug to plug it in depending on like what it is. So anyways, okay. If you've got a question post for question marks before and after, if you've enjoyed tales of botched audio video and lighting, um, then, uh, then let me know. You could tell I am passionate about events done well, youth man. I, I, I am in general and, uh, and really audio video and lighting has a chance to really, it should just disappear. That's the goal of it right? Is you just want to be like, I'm focused. I'm not distracted. Static, mics cutting out. You just want to remove distractions. You want, you want there to be a relationship between the people in the seats and the communicator. You don't want also, okay, I got one more for you. How hard is it for people to get slides and clickers to work? I have a million stories. Like how hard is it to get Give the speaker a confidence monitor. How hard is it to give the speaker a clock? But there's too many stories where you'll ever see, you've probably all seen this. Like you've been to an event where the person will be like, it's not working. And they'll go, hey, can you advance my slide? Hey, can you advance my slide? Hey, can you advance my slide? Hey, can you advance? Like if you're in that situation, You've made a lot of poor decisions up until that point. If you're just finding out that your clicker doesn't work, that the Wi-Fi in the room is wrong, that the thing isn't wrong in the room, 
you 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 waited too long to get it right so uh, okay uh, i'll let it go i don't know if i can i can let it go the gaming mom's seen it it's too common like click oh and then because think about it it ruins the experience on stage because then the person's like oh shoot oh my oh maybe my slides don't work okay or maybe the clicker doesn't work. That's just, it's stopping the flow. It's wasting time. Oh, oops. Uh, oh, shoot. Oh, can you advance my slide? It's all, that's all friction you want to remove. And so if you can remove friction from your events, that's that's ultimately uh, the goal. Um, yeah, for real. That's your staff. Get good people. Get world-class people. And I'm empathetic, man. AVR, AVL, I've, this is what I've learned. It's incredibly hard. Um, it, it's, it's a true, like being world-class at audio, video, and lighting and events, understanding atmospheres at a high level and energy and event flow is a real, real skill. And so, um, all right, let's, let's rapid fire a few more questions for you. Um, I saw someone also ask, they said they're having trouble getting the book free. If you haven't already downloaded the uh, book, it you, you will have to actually get it. So, so if I click the link to buy the book, it's not free. Yeah. Well, if you don't already have it, it's not free. To be clear. So there, here's here's how it works. A lot of people have already downloaded YouTube Secrets audiobook, and all you have to do is remove it from your library in your Audible app and then re-download it and you'll get the updated version for free. Um, if you also go to tubesecretsaudio.com and you've never downloaded Audible before, you can get a free, you can get it free. Now I'm assuming you already have Audible. And so in that case, you will need to use a credit or just pay whatever the price is. I think it's like nine bucks and you can get the updated version. So I hope that clarifies uh, that for you and um, and check that out. Smash like if you're enjoying your Saturday. And uh, uh, here we go. All right. Do you think a disability-focused channel might do better as a personality-based channel generally? I'm struggling with direction. Please help. So Aaron, um, I think you have a couple things to consider. I think that... You know, who is your channel for and what problem does it solve? So if your channel is focused on maybe helping somebody cope with, live with, solve. We have a VRA student that um, has had a very successful YouTube channel about helping people travel with disabilities. So um, this gentleman's in a wheelchair and it's think about how clear that is. It's his situation that he's overcoming and he's helping people travel with disabilities. So it's clarity of the channel. I would say that if you were to tack on disability to like something else, um, like a disability Pokemon channel, like around Pokemon cards, the two things would not need to be combined. Like you could potentially just do a Pokemon channel. So just to break down your options, like is it when you say disability focused is it is the target audience someone with a particular disability um who is the channel for for everybody watching this is a huge question you should answer and a lot of times we start with us in the spotlight versus actually who the channel's for whether it's personality based or not then is also up to you because it doesn't have to be personality based any of us watching this has the chance to do what would be considered a faceless channel, which could be um, voiceovers and B-roll. It could be educational. There's a lot of like history explain channels, for example. They explain history. They show old photos from books, images off the internet, clips, fair use, or like creative commons clips. So there's, Aaron, I think it's understanding that there's so many different ingredients you have. There are channels that succeed teaching just off. Uh, you just see their hands drawing. You just see slides or digital art being drawn out and they're never on camera. So you have a million kind of different ways you could go. My question would be, 
what do you want to do? You know, who is it you want to help? Um, what, who do you help and what problem do you solve? Um, and then, you know, finally, Aaron, it's like, you could just brainstorm maybe five to 10. This is what we recommend. Uh, I don't know if I have my three P's around, uh, you could brainstorm five to 10 passions and pop channel possibilities, and then potentially pick one that overlaps with what you think might also be mo most successful. So I think that some of us haven't spent the time to brainstorm. Okay. I could do a personality channel talking about my experience, having a disability. That's one option, but like, let's try to come up with seven others. Even if that's what you end up going with, you go also, okay, I could create a, a show review channel where I do recaps of shows. By the way, a lot of those, you know, you can use the shows for fair use. So if you just watched Ozark season four, you can, you can go to YouTube all the time and people recap season three and there's like still shots and they're like everything you need to know to get ready for season four. So you might go, I could create like a streaming TV uh, review slash recap slash Easter egg channel. There's a second idea. And then you're like, cause I, I love and I geek out about shows. Okay. You're like, I'm also a comic book enthusiast. I have a huge collection of comics. I could actually create. So I think getting a little bit outside of the box, Aaron, I know that I might've just given you like a hundred more ideas than you kind of had, but I think that uh, all of us could kind of benefit from taking a step back and thinking about, okay, and here's the three P's. It's like, what am I passionate about? Then also what am I proficient at? What could I talk about for hours? What do I know a lot about? What do I have experience in? What could I help others do? What have I overcome in my life that I could help others overcome in their life? What do other people acknowledge me as knowing about? When other people ask me questions, what do they ask me about? You might have a friend that always knows how to get the good deals and always knows how to do couponing or something. If someone always asks you, hey, where's the best deals? Maybe you should start a deal channel or a coupon review review channel or, or couponing you know, dollar store because we get so close to even our own skills or experience. What do other people acknowledge you know a lot about? Dude, you know everything about the Wu-Tang Clan. Oh my gosh, you know everything about classic rock. Those can be signs and signals to what you're also proficient at. And then finally you go profitable. So at the intersection of passion, proficiency, and profit, profit would then be, okay, how big is the market for this? Maybe a classic rock vinyl review channel of, of reviewing old albums you have may or may not scale to what you want financially and growth wise as diving into Pokemon, which is something you're deeply passionate about or some kind of niche game or something. So, uh, that's, I uh, hope that helps smash like if you're getting value on a Saturday as we are hanging out here. Um, and, um, let me, okay, here we actually go lightning round uh okay lightning round all right i don't have any new questions all right here you go if you've got a question put four question marks before and after your question randy asks my best performing video is on the spiritual realm i should double down on that video i think absolutely if you ever identify a winner um, a breakout video, a, a video outperforming other videos, then think about how to make a part two, part three, think about how you can turn it into a series and then realize, and Randy, something to check is, is it getting real time views in your YouTube analytics? If it is, then you have the opportunity when a second one comes out. So real time views means every two days, people are watching it even if it was released weeks ago or months ago or years ago. Great. So this video continues to be watched. So then when you release part two, the chance of the correlation on YouTube of this one also being recommended or even autoplayed after the other one or being suggested along with the other one is very high when you release part two and something else related to it. Furthermore, if this one's getting real-time views, it's also probably growing and getting you subscribers. So when your subscribers the chance of this part two getting recommended on your homepage, on their homepage with browse features, or getting recommended 
uh, or them even wanting to watch it. That's another good point. They click subscribe because something about the spiritual realm was in the title. So when you release like more truths about the spiritual realm, they're like, I love that. They'll probably watch that. So there's actually like algorithmic correlation, but then there's also just the human relationship correlation that if all of a sudden we did a video that like was on Adobe Premiere and lots of people liked it. If we do another video on Adobe Premiere, the people that are subscribed will be like, oh, sweet. I want to watch more stuff on Premiere. A good example, that's the Canon M50 in Think Media History. Like anything we did on the Canon M50 would continue to do well for a couple factors. Lots of subscribers had one or purchased one. But even beyond that, it was a very, it's, it's like an all-time camera. Canon M50 is like the Jordan 1s of cameras. Like it's a legendary camera. So it has such wide appeal that whenever we put out M50 videos, they would outperform other types of content. And if you're watching this, that's a great question to ask yourself, friend. Success leaves clues, make part twos. What videos in your library have done exceptionally well that you can make a part two or a follow-up to? Um, that could be very beneficial to you. Friends, this is exciting. If you're just joining, um, the second edition of YouTube Secrets is out. And it's can it's been kind of a weird release. The audio in a way kind of leaked, but I'm excited uh, because if you already have a copy of YouTube Secrets, you can just remove it from your Audible account, re-download it, and you'll get this for free. Now, if you've never got the audiobook before, yes, you either have to buy a credit um, or use one of your credits to get the book. Totally worth your time. Five hours and 29 minutes of updated content, brand new for a new decade. One rewritten chapter, one overhauled chapter. The whole book is redone with case studies and examples and, and tweaked and polished. Two brand new chapters, rewritten appendix with a whole list of really awesome resources. Um, and it'll absolutely be worth your time. I think it'll help you not just get into the right mindset for dominating YouTube in the next decade, but it'll give you some fresh tactics that you'll be grateful for. Um, if you've never downloaded Audible, you can use your one free Audible credit at tubesecretsaudio.com to also get it free. Or you may have to, again, spend the $9 to get it. Um, and you can just purchase a credit uh, as well. And uh, if you whether first edition or second edition, want to review the book, I'd love to hook you up with a free course. Um, our course, Crush Collabs, was recorded a few years back. It's now been sunset, but it, but the um, content in it is amazing. So this is a $97 uh, value. It's all about collaborations. How do you reach out and get people to collaborate with you? How do you reach out to bigger channels and get them to pay attention to you? We give you a couple emails that you can copy and paste. How do you reach out? for people to be interviewed on your show. And I believe it's at least four training videos. Um, you're going to love this. Again, hook you up with it entirely just to, uh, for free. If you leave a, a review of YouTube Secrets, um, my dream scenario is that you say, talk about the, the second edition. Be like, dang, second edition is fire. And uh, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. If you hate it, just leave an on, honest review, but I think you'll like it. And so uh, just if you leave a review, then email support at seancannell.com with the subject line book review, and then just post a link or a screenshot of your review and we'll get this to you. It'll be during business hours. If you happen to do this on the weekend, which is when I'm recording this and going live, then um hold your horses. It'll be there soon. We will send you that course. We will honor you and uh, hook you up with that in, in celebration of the leak, in celebration of the discombobulated release of YouTube secret second edition, the Kindle's like not updated. It looks like the physical book is, but here's what we know for sure. The audio book is out ahead of schedule. Um, and, uh, we are super, super fired up for it. In fact, um, Claire's got a great question. What are the main updates? Um, the main updates are a whole lot of new data about the creator economy. And so here's the new chapters. It does look actually like the physical. I just discovered this that the physical book looks like it's good to go. Uh, new updates about the creator economy. 
uh, in the preface and the introduction. So this has been rewritten. Here you go. So the preface and the introduction, how, how far can I go? Sweet. I actually, so it looks like you can get the, uh, the physical book because if you click preview, this is all the new chapters. So it's about 80 new pages because the first one is 197 pages. The new one's like 270 pages. So, um, we've, the seven C's of YouTube success are, um, slightly tweaked, but they're the same because they're, it's an unbreakable framework. That's the first, that's part one. Um, the introduction preface is over overhauled the perfect video recipe though, Claire, this is my favorite chapter, the perfect video recipe updated for exactly what's working on YouTube tied for, for second place with social media, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We rewrote the whole social media chapter. And the big idea there is actually how dangerous social media is to your YouTube success. You got to find out what I mean by that. Um, there's tips, but like, I actually think social media is one of your biggest enemies. If it's stealing your time, it's not the best use of your energy while you're trying to grow your channel and how even sharing your YouTube content on YouTube, uh, how sharing your YouTube videos on social media can actually be sideways energy in a lot of cases. So you'll love that chapter. Discoverability was rewritten because there's just new rules to discoverability. That's kind of the VRA stuff. And I mean, if you're in VRA, like we don't even come close to what you have access to. You've got yeah, right. Masters and we're dropping the 16 video formats in there and all that kind of stuff. But like you'll, you'll get a concise explanation of what's working for kind of ranking. Um, and then the new YouTube features, this chapter 15 is brand new where it's all about shorts, community tab, stories, YouTube live, YouTube kids app, um, and just some new things. And then the appendix is all updated. And so, yeah, we're pretty pumped. I mean, um, worth, worth checking out. And especially if you've got the, uh, oh no, you got, you got the classic now unavailable first edition arriving last week. And, uh, and if you had the audible though, Claire, you ha you can just download the audible. So just remove it from your library and then update it. And, you, and the second edition of the audible will, you can get it right down. Let me know if that works for you. You should be good. So. Um, and, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Check it out. Check it out. All right. Answering your questions today. My name is Sean Cannell rhymes with YouTube channel. Um, what do you think about buying views or subscribers to grow faster? I do not recommend it. So, um, it's, it's only going to mess your channel up if, if only be neutral, because, um, if you buy subscribers, like, they're either just bots and so they'll be inactive, but there's a ratio to the amount of subscribers you have when you release a new video and how your subscribers interact with that video. So the quote unquote only reason to buy views or subscribers would be for vanity numbers. Just so someone could do a drive by in your channel and be like, oh, wow, there's a good amount of views and subscribers. But what is that? That's just vanity. It's just pure optics doesn't make any difference into actual sustainable YouTube growth. That's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is you get some subscribers that now are not active. They're not clicking on your new videos. Therefore, YouTube is not getting the right signals. The algorithm is not being triggered properly. And it's in a way confusing the algorithm. And so I would just avoid it with a 24 yard stick. Yep. All right. Looking at some of the questions coming in here. Here we go. I have an idea for a reaction channel. Is it worth it for AdSense? Can you make videos, uh, money from these? Yeah, I mean, let me know what your idea is. Reaction could be reacting to anything. You could react to TED Talks. And if you built up a good audience, probably professionals, like let's say you're a speaker coach or like a, a professional speaker, which you probably aren't, but let's for just the sake of the conversation about reaction videos. So this is an incredible channel idea. I don't know if this exists. And obviously it would, it would be assuming you're great at breaking down public speakers. So watch this. Any public speaker coaches, you're welcome. So 
you create a reaction channel. You react to great speakers, TED Talks, any talks that are online. So you have unlimited people to react to. You could react to presidents. You could react to famous people like Tony Robbins. And you react to these different videos, but you break down tips and insights and observations about powerful public speaking. The AdSense on that channel would probably be incredibly high because it'd be being watched by other speakers and professionals that would want to be interested in that kind of information. So just by saying it's a reaction channel, now what I assume you mean is like literally the React brand, which maybe reacts to <clears throat> funny stuff, meme stuff. And I think here's the big question when it comes to how much you can make for AdSense. Who's the audience? Younger audiences, people with less buying power, non-US uh, audiences have lower CPMs. Flip side, uh, personal finance, older audiences, the medical field, the financial field, the crypto field, the tech field have higher CPMs. The type of people watching it. We get incredibly high CPMs on Think Media because a lot of people researching cameras, wanting to buy software, buy cameras, watch the content. So who is the re reaction channel for? That's the biggest question. And here's the final thing. You can win either way. If you go lower CPM, it's kind of like very entertainment. It's for the masses, but it might not be the most, if you will, quality of audience. And that quality means, again, that's why a personal finance channel gets paid so well is because the quality of the audience is people who want to like invest their money. So they want to sign up for public stock, public.com or like TD Ameritrade and those types of brand, the brands that want to add, what brands want to advertise on the videos? There's your question. What type of, do brands want to, does just Mountain Dew want to advertise on the, the videos to hit the masses with their latest code red drink? Or does Wealth Factory want to advertise on your videos to get in front of an audience that might invest thousands of dollars with them? Those brands are going to want to pay for the types of videos they're advertising on. And so you can win either way. If you go the wider, less affluent, potentially audience type of content, you need more views. So you just got to blow your channel up millions and millions of views. And you might find an intersection. Your CPM might be great and you're getting millions of views. Great, you're winning. The cool thing is if you pick the right niche, that's a more profitable niche, then you're good on the other side of you don't need a ton of views. You have a higher CPM, higher RPM, and you're off to the races for earning uh, if you will, a lot more money. Does that make sense? Hit like if you're getting value right now. Uh, CPM right now is 850. What's your uh, RPM? Uh, speak English with this guy. Is it around four bucks or 350 or something like that? It's not too bad. It's pretty good. Uh, Think Media right now. Um, our uh, our CPM is 2767. RPM is 1115 as of this moment. And of course it always kind of fluctuates. Some of that stuff is, is somewhat external, meaning, I mean, there's external factors, ad rates go up, ad rates go down. The December ad rates are usually through the roof or around November because of holiday shopping. So there's certain summer, maybe brands are advertising less, a lot of different things. Um, Claire, I had an amazing affiliate deal for personal finance, but it's no longer legal in Australia. Be careful with money talk. Yeah, there's definitely money regulations. Financial service providers we talk about like have to be careful with what advice they give or what financial softwares they recommend and stuff. So definitely do your due diligence if you're in the personal finance space. Do your due diligence regardless. Uh, what are the two free ways to get to the book? Uh, Michael, great question. So... The two free ways to get the book are number one, if you already have it, which you probably don't, that's why you're asking the question. But if, if you're watching this and you're like, oh yeah, I already, I downloaded the audio, uh, YouTube secrets, um, audio book a year ago, a week ago, 
you just actually go into your library, you hit the three dots, you say remove from device on Audible next to the book, and then re-download it, and it'll be the new edition. And you'll just instantly be upgraded, no other charge, no, nothing extra, you'll be instantly upgraded to the new book. If you, um, the second way is if you go to tubesecretsaudio.com and you've never downloaded Audible before or you don't have an Audible account, you can use, they'll give you one free credit and you can use it for the book. Those are the only two free ways to get it. The other way though, is you're like, shoot, I already have Audible. Maybe you get one credit a month. You either could buy and add a credit to your library. You also can buy through Audible just the book. I think it's $9 for the audiobook. Um, or you can uh, use that free credit or use one of your credits. And so that's how you get it. And by the way, second edition or first of because this is this is like a fresh stream. This like leaked out. I checked it. I was like, oh, shoot, whatever. It's Saturday afternoon. And I was like, might as well turn it into something. Let's talk about it and let people know how they can kind of get a head start, grab the book free. And also, if you want to leave a review, I'll send you our Crush Collabs course for free, all about how to do collaborations, get high level guests uh, to be interviewed on your show. Uh, it's a $97 YouTube course. Just review the book on Audible or anywhere on Amazon, honest review. And then just email us at support at seancannell.com. And in the subject line, make sure to, to write book review in the subject line. And then send us a link or screenshot to your review that actually makes it publicly on Amazon. Some reviews don't are, don't make it publicly. Because a lot of times if you go half-hearted with them, you're like, book good. <laughs> and so Amazon might not post it. So it's like, and it usually takes like 24, 48 hours for the review to uh publish and be patient. We will honor you with that course if you do that. Um, and uh, it, we'll do it during business hours. We'll make sure you get that course. Uh, Christianity Explain asks, when's the ebook going to be updated? I don't know. That's I don't know what's happening. All I know is I got on here to tell you about the audiobook. The Kindle clearly here is not ready yet. And so yeah, you can actually tell that it's the old book here. And so I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, that's But that's the point of today's stream is that the audiobook is updated. And apparently, we just discovered together a few minutes ago that uh, the physical book, the paperback, looks like it is updated as well. And so, uh, hey, here for it. We're, we're learning together. And so I, I, I'm going to have to, I'll be back on you know, sometime next week, I can verify that this is the second edition because the chapters, here's how you know, when you preview the physical book, you see that there's chapter eight, the perfect video recipe, chapter 15, new YouTube features. The original book only has 13 chapters. Um, so you see uh, that new content there. So it looks like the physical book is available on Amazon. Uh, and life is interesting. So we're out here. Uh, mobile freelancer, how often is your online course updated? Well, if anybody here is from VRA fam, I'm also streaming this in the the uh, couple of our Facebook groups. Is uh, we have been releasing it's it's updated quarterly. Just released a whole new batch of 25 videos in what's called VRA Masters, and um, it's updated quite often. Plus, we have a private Facebook group where we um, are going live weekly with the tip of the week. And then we also have the monthly VRA show and, and we're answering questions and doing that kind of stuff in there. So it is a very active, um, community. And, uh, I would love to show you inside actually, because I'm very excited about this new, um, uh, VRA, what's called VRA masters. And man, it's, it's, I mean, I would think so that it's great, but so you're going to get in here. What you're going to get is an introduction to the seven R system, 10 commandments of YouTube. Um, and then you go through those first six modules, which this shouldn't take you that long. 
Uh, it's not meant to, I know you're busy, you got stuff to do, you want to start getting results in, in on YouTube. But then eventually you can pop in here to VRA Masters. And so in here, we're re-going through what's called the 7R system. And all of these have been updated. These are updated a month and a half ago or something like that. So this is all brand new content. Uh, my favorite video outline for educational content. The next piece, a quick transition to the next strategic video, how to improve the content of your videos. And some of this new stuff in here, perfect video recipe is in here, 16 surefire video ideas for standing out in a crowded niche and earning passive income and growing from zero to 100,000 subscribers quick. Start going through all these. And so, um, yeah, we take it really serious. I mean, this is like my life's work. And of course, you always have our Think Media satisfaction guarantee. So you can have the peace of mind when joining the program um, for, you know, 30 days to try it out. But but you're, I think you're going to love it. So motivation health and wellness says vra masters is great yeah that's the new stuff and um and oh hey appreciate it inverted popes bought the physical book thank you so much after you read it um if you leave a review email us a picture of your review to support at seankennel.com and i'll send you my crush collabs uh, online course just as a thank you uh, i would love to hear specifically uh how you feel about the second edition um, and so definitely check it out. Um, my friends just got the update on audible. There you go. It works. So if you already have the book, you can get the update for free. There's the dream right there. The fit cosplayer just, just discovered it. Yep. You just remove it from your library, download it again. And boom, it's the second edition. No extra charge coming at you four years after the release of the original YouTube secrets. We got you covered with a fresh overhaul of the book for a fresh decade. This next decade is going to be the best decade on YouTube. Um, the future is bright and this is a good guide for you to help you along the journey. Yes, there's tactics and strategies in there. Um, but, uh, there's also the mindset, man, getting a, getting an unstoppable mindset keeping your mental toughness strong, you know, staying focused. Mindset's a big piece of this whole thing. It's the whole psychology piece. Question is, success leaves clues. Is that my quote? That is not my quote. I don't know whose quote that is. That is an old quote. Let's look it up. Success leaves clues. Uh, Tony Robbins said success leaves clues, but it's not a Tony Robbins quote either. I think it's a Jim Rohn quote. And so, yeah, Jim Rohn is, is a classic kind of leadership, personal development. Looks like someone wrote a book called Success Leaves Clues. Looks like multiple people have written a book called Success Leaves Clues. So, um, you know, there you go. Uh, VRA is like a YouTube university. I think I just paid in full as of April 22. That's amazing. Yeah, you know, as of the time of recording, which we're in, we're making some major changes to it. But as of the time of recording this video, I'm going live right now, but um, eventually VRA is going to be like Netflix, meaning there's no such, there's not going to be a lifetime membership because we do keep updating it. We keep it current. Um, we update it. We add to it. Therefore, there's obviously an energy and a cost to that. It's not like an online course I recorded five years ago and it's just they're static. Therefore, it's not always going to be lifetime access. The era we're living in right now, it is. So uh, La Diosa um, did a payment plan. And now that it's paid off, you're in. There's no extra fees, no extra charges. Like literally, you have access to not just VRA, but the updates, the group, the whole deal. So if you're on the fence about joining VRA or you've been in our community and you've been checking things out, like it's this is the best era to, to be in uh, before. And so... Um, you got to just press record is my quote, punch perfectionism in the face is half stolen from my friend, John Acuff. So John Acuff has a great book that says punch fear in the face. So I think I say, uh, I say punch fear. I it came out one day when I was like, listen, you got to just punch fear in the face and punch perfectionism in the face and press record. And so giving credit where credit's due. Great book called Start, uh, Punch Fear in the Face, Escape Average, and Do Work That Matters. 
from your boy, John Acuff. I'm out here giving credit to whatever quotes I can remember. Um, and so, uh, start punch fear in the face. Hey, just got the audible edition. Great, great, great. Just got the audiobook. Awesome. Hey, appreciate it. Uh, enjoy. Let me know what you think about it. And, uh, super grateful. All right. Listen, friends. Um, my name is Sean Cannell. I appreciate you hanging out with me for a Saturday. If you're just joining and you want to hear all the details about the leaked, uh, the, the most, uh, the most un, what would you, unprofessional release of the second edition possible. That's what I can say that we've achieved the most sketchiest release. The audiobook came out. The Kindle's not out. The physical book appears to just have been already during this stream. So um, why we may not get an award for the best book launch second edition, because who knows what's happening. What we can say for sure is that the second edition of YouTube Secrets is out on Audible. And if you already have it, you actually can update it for free, which is pretty cool. If you don't have it, well, you don't get it for free unless you don't have Audible and they actually do hook you up with a free book, tubesecretsaudio.com to check out all the details about that. Um, I want to thank you for being a part of our community, whether you're part of the VRA fam or inner circle, whether you are a part of uh, our Think Media podcast channel, whether we just met, whether we've known each other for months, years. Um, I just want to say I'm grateful for you. I respect you that you're focused on your dreams, your goals, your hustle, your YouTube channel, that you want something for your family, for your future, that you're putting in the work, that you're punching fear in the face, that you're pressing record, that you're getting uncomfortable, that you're stressing yourself, that you're learning new skills. And uh, I'm here to help. Um, I want to help you win on YouTube, myself and the Think Media team. And um, thanks again for uh, being here today on this stream or on the replay. If you didn't know, Growth Video Live is just a couple weeks away. I'm going to end with a video today. Uh, but thanks again for hanging out. And I will talk to you in a future video. Have you ever thought about using social media and YouTube to market and build your business online? You know, right now, YouTube has over 2.3 billion active users. That's billions of potential customers all on one single platform. But how do you reach them? You've probably been seeing other successful business owners market marketing their services, expanding their businesses, and building their personal brands, all using YouTube and social media. But you haven't been able to figure it out for your business. And you know you need to take advantage of this opportunity, but you feel overwhelmed with everything else you have to manage. You just feel like you don't have the time for this. So how can you realistically start using video to grow your business? Well, we'll show you exactly how at Grow With Video Live 2022 conference. Go to growwithvideolive.com or click the link in this post or in the description to secure your limited time discounted ticket. During this two-day event, you'll learn exactly how to grow and monetize your business from experts with real results. You're going to learn directly from proven industry experts who have built reliable and successful online businesses like Gary Vaynerchuk, Patrick Bet David, Shalene Johnson, Pat Flynn, Vanessa Lau, and more. You'll meet hundreds of other creative entrepreneurs just like you and connect with leading brands in our industry. Join us in person in Las Vegas or virtually from anywhere in the world. Secure your ticket at growwithvideolive.com and take the fast track to dominating the next decade with video. Go to growwithvideolive.com or click the link in this post or in the description to secure your limited time 